Hi, this is Damon Pistolka, host of the Faces of Business, where I talk with interesting people sharing life and business experiences to entertain, engage, build community, and provide information to help others succeed. If you're interested in learning more about one of our guests or how we are helping business owners generate wealth and build businesses they can sell or succeed at Exit Your Way, you can find more information on our website, ExitYourWay.com, or by contacting me directly, Damon, at ExitYourWay.com. I hope you enjoy the show. All right, everyone, welcome once again to the Faces of Business. I am your host, Damon Pistolka, and I am excited for our guest today because we have none other than Tom Schwab from Interview Valet. Welcome, Tom. Damon, I am thrilled to be here. Man, this is going to be a lot of fun because, you know, we're going to be talking today about driving business results with conversations you're a chief marketing officer in a past life. You've done sales. You, you, you know, we'll go through your background, some other things, but these are some things that we want to really expose and talk to people about how you're helping people drive results with conversations, but also how personally you think this has been able to help you and, you know, through your journey. Mm hmm so yeah. let's start it off like we always do, Tom. Tell us a little bit about your background. Well, I was going to say, when you ask somebody with as much gray hair as I do, that could be a long answer, right? But I was a, <laughs> a, a Midwestern kid, never been more than 100 miles from my hometown. And by the grace of God and a clerical error, I got into the U.S. Naval Academy. So if you're, you're listening from the <laughs> States, thanks for paying my education. Uh, yes. It was a great opportunity. Got to see the world. It changed um, my viewpoint on on life, and uh, mm -hmm. got to see a lot of things. Uh, was a, a engineer, ran nuclear power plants in the Navy. Enjoyed it, uh, but then peace was breaking out. Remember that mm -hmm. around ninety two. Um, I'd done everything that I wanted to in the Navy. So uh, I went from one steady job to another and worked for a Fortune 500 company and realized I didn't want to be an engineer. I started as an engineer, then went to operations, mm -hmm. then went into sales and actually ran a sales organization. And it was all an evolution from one to the next. Um, at uh, the 2008 recession, the manufacturer bought back all the distributorships. You know, they wanted to cut out the middleman, which makes a whole lot of sense till you look in the mirror and you're like, hey, I'm the middleman. Yeah. They, they did right by me, but it was great because it gave me an opportunity to launch my own business, um, did direct to patient durable medical equipment uh, with something called inbound uh, marketing. We were HubSpot's first e-commerce case study, built it up wow. from a regional player to a national leader, sold that off. And then I started to think, wow, I bet you we could use podcast interviews the same way we used guest blogging 15 years before. So I tested it. It worked well. And that's become Interview Valet. And, uh, you know, it's grown to a team of 30 people in Europe and North America. And we serve, you know, high level authors, uh, coaches, consultants, and brands really to get their message out there on interviews so they can talk directly to their ideal customers and build their brand and build their business. Yeah, that's cool. And that's, it's, it's a, your background. So I got some questions about the background because if I do this later, it kind of gets us off topic. What's the coolest thing you learned or saw in the Navy? Um, it's something that's been with me my entire life. What's ordinary to you is amazing to others, right? I was on an aircraft, Ooh. I was on an aircraft carrier and you could always tell the newest people, right? They, they climb all the ladders to get up to vultures row and watch the planes take off. Right. And after about three days, it's like, eh, it's ordinary, right? Same thing. It got to be ordinary for me to, you know, sit there and run a nuclear reactor. Right. And mm -hmm. throughout life, I've noticed that, right. Everybody underestimates what they do and overestimates what 
other people do and what other people know. And so I've just realized that, you know, what's ordinary to you is amazing to others. And we all have amazing things we've seen and it's fun when we share it with each other. That's incredible. I was that. Thank you so much for sharing that because that we all think that every single day, I think, I believe. Yeah. 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 And we, and, and people are listening. We had no idea. I had no idea you were saying that, but that's so cool. I just had to get my train of thought back here. Awesome. Thank what's you. Or, what's ordinary to you is amazing to others. Yep. I've got it written down correctly. Thank you so much on that one. So as, as you said, you thought back in the day, like you're using blog posts. Did I get this right? You were going to try to use podcast interviews. So I mean, nine years ago, yes, there were podcasters, but not like there are now. What, what, what was your idea back then? It's just, just kind of walk us through that a little bit. I, I think everything in life is evolutionary, not revolutionary, right? We're mm -hmm. always taking something and optimizing it. So as I had sold off my one company, I had buddies that were saying, well, how did you do it? Right. And yeah. I'm like, ah, you, you do a lot of blogs, a lot of content. And this was 2014. Even by that time, it's like, yeah, blogs were getting old, right? Mm -hmm. They weren't working nearly as well. That, that magic yeah. trick had been done. So I thought, hmm, I wonder if you could do it on podcast interviews because podcasts were up and coming. Mm -hmm. And the other thing too is, you know, I'm a mechanical engineer by degree. I always joke, I are engineer, right? Yes. For me, writing a blog was a homework assignment, but talking, oh, I can do that. Yes. So started to test that. And it's like, it works the same way, right? You get mm -hmm. the SEO from the backlinks. You get to tap into other people's audiences. And now with technology, especially, you can repurpose that into so many different ways. So I just sort of looked at it and what, maybe it was um, Wayne Gretzky that said, you want to skate to where the puck was going. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I was that smart, but I was just like, I don't want to write, write blogs. I want to do something fun, something yeah. that matches my, my values, matches my, my company. And then also from the standpoint of, I knew that if I could talk to customers, either one-on-one -on -one or at conferences, I could convert them. So it's mm -hmm. like, how can I do this at scale? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's one of the things that, that has really su not surprised me, but pleasantly uh, surprised me about doing video is that if you do video like this, like us talking on this conversation right now today, people feel that they get to know you. And it, it really is powerful because I'm sure some of your clients, if they've got any experience close to close to what I've had with video is that you will get people that call and they, they feel they somewhat know you because they've watched enough videos with you and I, go ahead. I would say it's not only video, but audio, right? So mm -hmm. some people love videos and will watch those. Yeah. And yeah, after they've spent enough time with you, they know all the backstories. They, they yes. recognize your voice. They recognize you. Um, but even before the video time, I had people that would like stop me. I remember one time being in the airport and somebody came up and said, you know, are you Tom Schwab? And I, my first thought is, you know, are you a process server? Um, <laughs> yeah. But he, he recognized my voice. Oh my I'm goodness. Like, that is amazing. And then he started coming up and talking to me and he knew so much about me yeah. just because he had heard me on different places. And mm -hmm. I think there's that intimacy uh, that you have. And it's, I don't know if it's a little bit of voyeurism or what, but when you listen to somebody, you feel like, you know, them, you feel like you've got a friendship and at times, especially before video, people would almost like the radio days where you had a vision of what the DJ looked yes. like, you know, often yes. I'll have people say, Oh, you know, I thought, I thought you were taller. I'm glad, I'm glad that I have a tall sounding voice or I look yes. all on video. Right. Yeah. So uh, it's amazing that just level of intimacy and, you mm -hmm. know, even now you meet people online and you feel like we're friends, right. Mm -hmm. But you can't remember, 
have we ever met in real life? Or, you know, the next time I'm in Seattle, right? I'll call yes. you up because we're friends and we'll get together. And mm-hmm. it'll be the first time we've ever, quote unquote, met in real life. But mm-hmm. you feel like, ah, oh, I know them. I'll give them a hug. It, it's yes. just amazing that level of intimacy that you can get from audio and video now. This is true. And I think, you know, I didn't want to overlook audio because as you see, as you said, people, some people like podcasts, some people like videos, but either way you create that mental image or get that mental image of those, those people and and really get to know them. Mm -hmm. And so as you're helping people at interview valet and you're getting, getting them on these different podcasts or live streams, what are some of the feedback that you get from them? What are some of the things they say about their, their interactions with hosts or the communication with potential clients or, or people afterwards? Yeah. And I think marketing is always telling us, you know, you need, you need bigger, you need uh, more leads. You need all of this. And I was amazed me, right? It's like, what are we Mm -hmm. optimizing for? Right. The bank has never been, impressed by how many Facebook likes or leads I get. But what we're hearing from clients is when they go on live streams like this or podcasts, they get better leads. And after somebody Mm -hmm. listens to you for 30 or 45 minutes, they self-select, right? They're either going to turn you up or turn you off. And if you're not their, their, um, their best solution, that's fine. You don't want just more leads. Mm -hmm. But when they come, they've already self-selected. They know more about you. It's not a sales call. It's almost like a a qualification call at that point. Mm -hmm. And so the data says, and we've gotten this from a lot of our our bigger clients that, you know, track it down to marketing channel, cost of lead acquisition, Mm -hmm. cost of customer acquisition, the churn rate. They say they close quicker for a higher level because it's not just a, uh, uh, it's not just a transaction. It's based on a relationship and they churn less. So it's, uh, it's, it's amazing. And in some ways, as you look, look at it, it's not amazing, right? Mm -hmm. Because if somebody's heard you, if they've been introduced to you by somebody, they already know and trust, right? So if Damon introduces me, you like Damon, right? It's almost like that transference of authority. It's it's mm-hmm. more like a personal referral than it is, you know, just a cold Facebook ad. Yes. Yeah, because you, you're right. Because the listeners are here on the face of the business now. They've heard me a, a lot of times. And now they're they're getting, you know, listen to Tom. Talk about what Tom's doing. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. So as you're, as you're helping people do this, one of the things that people always think is, man, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, there's nothing interesting. There's really not much that, um, what would I talk about? I mean, how do you have to help people prepare for these kind of things? Because that's the first thing I think a lot of people think about when they go to, I don't speak it for a living or I don't do that. What are some of the, the, concerns people come to you with when they start this yeah it, it, one of the things i always point out to them is what i mentioned earlier what's ordinary to you is amazing to other people mm-hmm. and sometimes people will say well i'm not i'm not an expert and i had that problem early on and a buddy of mine that's a uh, lawyer actually helped me with that the legal definition of an expert and i'm paraphrasing this is someone who knows more by their by their training by their experience um by their activity than the average person, right? So if you're working in your business day in and day out, you've got expertise in that business, in that industry, right? Uh, If you've been married 20 years, you've got more expertise than somebody that's just, you know, that's just starting out. If you, if you, if you're in fourth grade, you've got expertise in math to the Mm -hmm. second grader, right? So it doesn't mean you're the world renowned expert. Uh, it means you have expertise. And one of the things that we have found is there's different types of experts, right? There's yes. the, there's the, uh, the, the PhD, 
right? That person that's got all the letters behind their name, they actually don't do well on podcasts Mm -hmm. because it's hard to relate to them, right? And sometimes it's the, the old sage, the person that's been doing it, you know, for decades and could talk about it. They do really well on podcasts because they have great stories to tell and people relate to them. Or you could be the person that's just, you know, one or two steps ahead of them, right? And they work great on podcasts because people can relate to them, right? I understand you. Yeah, you've been through where I am. Um, and, you know, mm-hmm. if, you, if you're if you in an industry, you can speak their jargon, right? You understand yes. their problems and that becomes so, so relatable. And, you know, you're not for everybody, but you're for the people that you can help and you can connect with. And I think COVID has really helped us because before this, I think people were scared about getting on Zoom or getting on a call, right? I'm not a public speaker. No, fast mm-hmm. forward it. We've all lived online where it's like, oh, to jump on a, a Zoom call or something like this where I'm in the comfort of my own office or my own home, that's a mm-hmm. whole lot easier than you know, go into a, a, a TV studio or a radio studio where you've got cameras and, and, and mm. things in your face. Yes. Yes. That's for sure. That's for sure. And I think that, as you said, people are now more comfortable getting on video, but sharing their stories too, because we've, we've, had to work on this, whether we liked it or not in marketing to talk about our businesses, like you were talking earlier in blog posts and other things. And it comes back again to something said earlier is that, you know, writing a blog post was like a homework assignment, but when people figure out how it is to be on a video interview, a lot of people find it much easier than writing is what I'm trying to say. And I think it's more authentic now too, right? It's writing a blog today here in what the spring of 2023 is easier than ever, right? I can, yeah. I can go to chat GPT and I can get a blog in five seconds. Yes. So all of a sudden everybody's putting out this generic. Oh yeah. John, whatever it is. And it's just, it's just going to get flooded. And it's like, well, is this blog really, from Damon or is it AI or, you know, is it a VA that wrote it for him? Well, when they actually watch your video or hear your interview, they know it's you and Mm -hmm. it's all those imperfections. It's your heart that comes through. Um, and that's what relates with people, right? At the end of the day, people want to work with people they know, like, and trust. And it's more important, the bigger, the engagement is. Uh, There's a great book out there uh, called ClickSand, How Digital Marketing is Ruining Your Business. ClickSand. Yeah. uh, Bill Troy's out of Columbus. And I love how he says, big fish don't swim through funnels and whales don't click. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a, a business that's got, you know, substantial engagement, substantial money, um, it, it, you can't just use, you know, funnels and clicks. Uh, people are going to have to know who you are and, mm-hmm. and what you believe. Yes. Well, I think that's, that's very true. Very true. And, and a lot of people confuse that because they think that, Oh, I well, like, you know, if we build the right funnels, they'll come or something like that, you know, but in, in the end, what, what what we find and what we do because it's you know selling a business is a higher ticket item there's no doubt about that and uh the we every time that in the past when we tried to do you know advertising online or something like that the pay-per-click kind of stuff you get the wrong kind of client i'll just say that and it, it just doesn't but when you do like we're doing today and someone talks to us now, they know who we are. Like you said, they've seen us. They understand if we're, if we're a, a might be a good fit, they can get a lot farther down the road. Like we know people want to do now. And when they come to us, it's not like I'm one of six anymore that they're, they're talking to. It's usually like, Hey, you're, you probably can help us. This is massive. When you look at this, I think from a business standpoint, because 
now I've I've gone past the point of am I someone that could potentially help? Is this someone that I might like? Do they pr- offer me something that could help me? And then is it something that I'm willing to pay for? Because a lot of times we get down to the end of conversations now after this kind of stuff and, and people are going, Oh yes, we, you know, we, we need to know scope of work and what's going on and those kind of things. And then, and then what's it going to cost? It's not like cost and all these other things come out right away. It's at the end because you've gotten down the road and built enough trust that they know you're going to be fair on that yeah, because of the other things. And, yeah. and uh, you don't have to prove yourself every single time. Cause you've already proven yourself. And Damon, we had a client that came to us and I remember asking him, well, why do you want to do podcast interview marketing? And I loved his answer. He was a high level consultant, big, big engagements. Right. Mm-hmm. And he said that he thought that most of digital marketing was the equivalent of advertising above urinals. <laughs> and I just had to stop and said, explain that to me. And he's like, well, my clients, you know, you're supposed to be where everywhere your clients are. He's like, if, if my clients saw me advertised above a urinal or on a park bench or on the bus going by, he said, that would be a reason for them not to hire me. Right. Mm-hmm. I want to be seen when they're making the buying decision and where it's consistent with my brand. And it's almost like you, right? Uh, how many, how many, blind emails a day do I get from somebody that wants to help uh, sell my business, right? Mm -hmm. I am not relying on them. You know, somebody I don't know with the most important sale, the the biggest sale that I will ever do in my life, right? Mm -hmm. Why would I do that, right? So if all of a sudden I saw somebody that I, 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 I trusted that doing that, I might like, "Eh, I don't know. But if I heard them, if I had followed them for a while, if somebody had said, you know what, you need to check this podcast out. Damon's a good guy. You know, I think he could really help you. Right. If that, that comes now, it's that warm, warm thing. And now I'm just reaching out, not saying, you know, you sell me, but I want to sell myself on why you should take me as a client. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, it it changes it changes the conversation, and that's the nice part about it. I think for people that embark on this journey, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, my uh, my thing last year, I, every year I've got a a different phrase, and my phrase last year was one conversation away. Because what I, one of the things I realized is that everything great in my life has come through a conversation. Yes. Yes. I was actually reading something about that today. It was funny that we we have this conversation today, and it was it was not talking about conversations, but it says we people get what they get in life because of the relationships they build, and those relationships are built because you have taken the time to build strong relationships where people can get to know you and they like being around you, and. It's it's just so powerful what these conversations can really do. And and at the end of the day, I think it's even more fun when people take the approach of this conversation is for the sake of having a good conversation. Because if you try to weave in too much of, you know, business, sales, whatever it is, unless that's appropriate down the road, the conversations become muddied and they really aren't as genuine and as unique as they could be. And, and really get allowing people to understand the people behind what we're talking about before we move any further. I agree with you. It's like, if it's not a genuine conversation, is it a conversation, right? There you you go. If you're asking (laughs) me, if you're just asking me rote questions and I'm giving you my talking points, I don't know that that's a conversation or if, yeah. uh, or, or if you're asking not the deep questions, right. And I'm giving shallow answers, right. The, the world mm-hmm. doesn't have enough time for, for more BS. So a real yeah. conversation, it's like, let's, let's figure this out. And sometimes it can be bounce around different places. Sometimes mm-hmm. it can be, 
awkward conversations, right? An awkward question, or yes, me a question that I don't know the answer to, but let's figure this out here. And I think those are the power, most powerful ones. And mm -hmm. I just look at it as conversations are the most important thing I have in my life and it goes along with relationships, right? But the conversations I have with other people, right? Are they drawing me to the future that I want? The conversations that I have with myself, right? Are they serving me or not serving me? Um, yeah. And uh, so I, I think we need to be very conscious of the conversations. And even sometimes when we're trying to avoid conversations, right? Sometimes it's just easier. I'll, I'll just work on this funnel. I'll just tweak this page and, and do all the rest of this uh, and call it marketing. Well, mm -hmm. I, I look at marketing as, you know, having a conversation with somebody that could be your ideal customer. It's not, you know, changing, changing the font on my website to see if they like that more. Yes. Yes. And I, these, these conversations, I think I, I really, I enjoy, there was, there was a book I read uh, earlier or no, late last year um, by Marcus Sheridan's that they ask you answer. I don't know if you read, I, I love it because I, I, it, reading it, you understand it. It's like, educate your customers. Don't sell, just educate your customers. And when I, well, it's so simple. You think that it's, does it really work? And then you start doing it and you go, huh, it really does work because they just have a lot of questions. And the more questions you can answer very uh -huh. often. And I think marketing to me is not about building a funnel anymore. Marketing to me is about providing being the best educator I can in my field because it's through conversations like this, it's through other ways, but the conversations we're talking about today, when you do that, it just makes things so much easier for them, allows right. them to make informed decisions. I, I love that book from Marcus. I've known him for oh, probably a decade and his title is more politically correct than mine. I always looked at it as I remember uh, in college, there was a professor that when you would answer a question and you didn't know the answer, but you would just put something down. Right. Mm -hmm. And he would write a T F Q all over the paper, which stood for answer the question. Right. And as marketers, as business owners, so often they ask and we don't answer the question. Right. Yes. You look at Marcus, one of his, blogs that was like most powerful is what does a pool cost? Yes. That's what everybody was asking. Now there's yeah. not, there's not one answer, right? Mm -hmm. But he could say, well, this is what the above ground pool costs. This is what, you know, this kind of pool costs. And that's what people really wanted to know, right? Yes. How many times do they ask the question? And it's like, well, I really don't want to answer it. Well, they're going to keep asking and the per first person that answers it is going to build that trust with them. Uh, mm -hmm. Another thing that I love is the, everybody's got their frequently asked questions. I always like the frequently unasked questions, right? Yeah. Here's what you should be asking and, you know, just help people. The, the better educated they are, the, the, the easier it'll be for them to come to a decision and, you know, mm -hmm. no, I'm really big on there's two answers in life. There's heck yes. And there's no, just let me get the information I need to get to heck yes or no. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's great. And, and, and I think that a reason I brought the book up is because I think the fact of educating customers, we, we, we get marketing drilled into us, right? You're going to build the funnels. You're going to do all this stuff. But when we stop and think and talk about what we're talking about today is having these conversations and how important it is to just educate your customers, it becomes very easy for someone like you, like me, like others to get on a podcast or a live stream and speak on a topic that they know a lot about to educate their potential customers. And it's just, it's one of these things that I think it when we think about our, our marketing, and I'm going to use that term loosely because I really don't think it's marketing, and turn that into educating customers, it becomes very easy for people to do a lot of marketing. Oh, it, it does. And <laughs> you know, the idea of a 45-minute keynote 
where somebody just hands you the uh, the microphone yeah. and says, and here's Damon. That's intimidating, right? That takes yes. preparation yes. to go to an interview and just, like you said, they ask you answer, right? Because the questions that the host is asking are the same thing that your, that your clients are asking. And mm-hmm. our best clients are the ones that repurpose the content. Right. I can think mm-hmm. of one CEO that we worked with um, and his his staff was asking him to write a bunch of blogs and said, answer this question, answer that question. He finally came back and said, I've been on a dozen interviews. I have answered all of these questions. Here's the links to them. And they went out there and they got the transcript and they made some blogs out of it. They mm-hmm. cut the videos. And now it's not only answering the question, but hey, here is our our founder, our CEO answering it on this podcast. It's almost like that scene on TV. So it's mm-hmm. yeah, podcast interviews or live streams. It's almost like, um, they ask you answer, um, yes. in the modern day. And as you said, these audio video, uh, recordings can turn into blog posts. They can turn into snippets. They can, t- they can be so many ways they can be repurposed to bring different points across wherever they, they want them to be. Yeah. You can get a month's worth of content from a single 45 minute interview. And yeah. I've seen, I've seen it done. You figure the blog posts that can come out of this, the little snippets, the images from a, a quote, um, there's just the audiograms, right? You, you see those mm-hmm. on, on Facebook all the time. You can get reels out of it. Uh, in fact, I was just talking with somebody the other day and he had something where it cuts off the left third, the right third, and just leaves the center for the reels. And so they're so easy to do. You can get yeah. a month's worth of content and it doesn't take any more of your time to do it. Yeah, that's a great thing. It's a great thing. So as, as you're helping people do this, what are some of the biggest questions that you have to answer? I think the biggest question is always that I start with is why, Mm -hmm. right? Because people will come and say, I want to do a podcast. I want to do, uh, interviews. Okay. Well, why, right? That it's a means to the end. And I think once they understand why they're doing it, then it makes the strategy so much easier. Right. We've Mm -hmm. got some people that do it just for the SEO value. Right. If that's the case, then go on podcasts that are hosted by colleges because you're going to get dot edu backlinks, which are um, incredibly powerful. Right. Other Mm -hmm. ones will say I'm trying to um, up market. Right. I want to to go to a, a higher level in the market. Okay, well, then get on different podcasts there. Maybe I want to build and my my team and get exposure to my um, my C-suite. We've done that with clients where everybody gets out on podcasts, especially when uh, during COVID, when they couldn't get out and speak all the places. Mm-hmm. There's other ones that uh, we worked with one company uh, that wanted to build the brand so that they could sell the company. Right. Yep. And they had a lot of, it was a software as a service company. Mm-hmm. And he, he built the business around him telling the story of him building it for his mom and then using it for other places. And he got acquired by Squarespace and he swears one of the big reasons was, is because his churn rate was lower because all of his competitors, I don't know, they, they made a bet out of Bangladesh, right? I didn't know who they were, but after you heard Gavin's story, it's like, Oh yeah, I like them. I, I like the, the story behind it. I, I like the company. Um, and so they had less churn with that. So wow. I think the biggest thing is start with why, why are you doing it? And then build the strategy around there. You know, yeah. a, pod, a podcast or a podcast guesting is a tactic, figure out how you can use it in your strategy. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So then I've got the second the second thing because I think do it the why is great because you need to understand you know how it's going to help you and what it, what you're hoping to accomplish from it because you know the, you you understanding that will help you measure whether or not it's doing what it's supposed to. 
So when people start doing it, what are some of the comments you get back after they've done a few of these interviews? That they had a whole lot of fun with it. And, you know, we are a people driven company, but we make decisions on data, right? So the results come, it's so that qualitative and quantitative, right? Where the qualitative is they get off the interview and said, that was so much easier than I thought. It went so much faster. Um, that was fun. When's the next interview? So that initial qualitative of that was a great conversation. I know that's going to do great things. The quantitative comes, you know, a month later when the interview gets released and all of a sudden they see an uptick in, in visitors to their website, or they see people connecting with them on, on LinkedIn or social media, people start calling them and saying, I heard you on a podcast. And, you know, after you've done it for a while, somebody will say a podcast that you did a year before, and you're trying to remember, what did I talk about about that? But doesn't matter because they remember every single word of it. So there's a little bit of qualitative, uh, a little bit of quantitative. Uh, but um, it, I used to think that it took a long time, right? Because it's not instantaneous, right? It, it takes a couple yeah. months to get up yeah. and running. But yep. uh, then I had a, a couple of um, customers that said, no other channel, right? If you're doing Facebook marketing or any other channel, it's going to take a few months yes. to to get that and dial it in before you get results. Whereas mm -hmm. with podcasting, you know your you know your message. You just have to get in front of the right audience there. Yes. And thank thankfully now with the data that we have, with all of the databases that that we license, everyone mm -hmm. tells us a different piece in the puzzle. So we're able yes. to really really get get on the target very, very quickly with that. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes I look and say nine years ago, I, how did we do it without the data? It was more podcast guesting yes. Yes. than podcast guesting. And now, uh, you know, if, if I always tell people, if you don't have the data, it's podcast guessing. Yes. Yes. That's great. That's great. Because I think, I think people, the, the apprehension to get in and try this stuff is, is, is real. I mean, a lot of people haven't done this, but, as we talked about, if they can get on, have conversations and help to educate their potential customers and really help them, I think they will, they will definitely enjoy it. And the results they can get are, are phenomenal. It's so cool. So Tom, it's been great having you here today. I just, I, I just enjoy this so much and, and, and being able to learn more about how you're helping people really harness conversations and using podcasts and live streams to do this. And, and, uh, are there any last, last things you think that people should understand if they're contemplating this? Well, let me give a couple of resources here, right? There you uh, go. And I, I'm not as good enough. I'm not a good enough communicator to solve everybody's problems in 45 minutes, right? Yes. yes. Um, so if you just go back to interview valet.com forward slash faces. Um, mm -hmm. I'll put a page together there. Uh, there's an assessment we have, you know, 10 questions. Will podcast interview marketing work for me? Um, I wrote a book called podcast guest profits, how to grow mm -hmm. your business as targeted interview strategy. Um, you can buy it on Amazon or I'm happy to give you a copy. Uh, that'll be back there also. And if you just want to talk to me, right. And say, how could I use this? happy to uh, to jump on a call uh, and I'll put all of that back there at interviewvalet.com forward slash faces. And I guess all the, right. the, the final thing I'll leave you with here is that what's ordinary to you is amazing to others, right? You could help so many people right now yes. with what you know, and yes. it's easy to do as a podcast guest, as a podcast host. If I can do it from rural Southwest Michigan, you can do it from wherever you are. Yes. Yes. That's for sure. Well, Tom, thanks so much for being here today. Thanks for talking about interview valet and how people can really harness podcasts and live streams to drive conversations that will help them get exposure to potential customers and, and build the relationships that, that will help them. Thank you, David. All right. Well, if you were listening today and you didn't get a chance to hear this from the beginning, get back to the beginning. Let's talk to, let's see 
what you know about uh <laughs> i got tongue tied here get back to the beginning and listen to what tom had to say because there's a lot of things if you're thinking about using conversations getting on podcasts getting on live streams this is the one you want to listen to thanks everyone we'll be back again later bye